I am honored to have an incredible friend, an incredible uh, key to chiropractic, uh, the secret that uh, the best kept secret that I have in my practice uh, are many things I've learned from this incredible guy on how to use humor, how to stick to the basics and the most fundamental truths of chiropractic, how to utilize systems that, that propel us towards success are all incredible traits and attributes that this guy, Dr. Brian Dooley, who is the Dean of Clinics at Sherman College of Chiropractic, implements. My friend, Brian the Dooley, great to have you on the show today. It is great to be here, Dr. Jake the Hansen. This will be fantastic. <laughs> so I always love it. your jacket looks fabulous. Oh, thank you, my friend. And so you do too. It's not just the jacket, <laughs> but you do too. But it is an absolute pleasure to be with you on Chiropractor's Edge this morning. Oh, thank you. I, I remember uh, one of the first times you and I met at Mile High. Uh, you and I are both very tall, broad, handsome men. So yes. our wives say anyway. Emphasis on the handsome. <laughs> and I remember looking at your jacket and my wife goes, I think he's got the exact same jacket you do. And I looked <laughs> and I remember literally walking up and like pulling your collar back. I'm like, it is. <laughs> yeah. And then that's how our friendship began was me doing that. Uh, it was me doing that. But um, no, uh, you guys, Dr. Brian Dooley is an, is an incredible man. Uh, he is a Hall of Fame speaker. Um, I, I know that, uh, that uh, public speaking... Uh, is something that you have developed being able to be an incredible speaker and an incredible voice for chiropractic. And you have used your individual talents to propel chiropractic in the light that it is. And so for those of you guys that, um, that may not, uh, uh know, uh, Brian, um, Brian practice or Brian graduated, uh, from school in 2005, so practicing about 17 years. And, uh, the last, uh, the last six months, has been a huge, a huge milestone for the chiropractic profession. So this guy decided, so he was having a, a very successful career within chiropractic at Pickens Family Chiropractic. Mm -hmm. And um, you have had, and you've been with Sherman College for how long now? I believe I'm in my 10th year. Is it 10th year? Um, one of the things that we hear consistently throughout our profession um, and through several chiropractors uh, that they don't have enough time to, and then you add it to, you add anything else to that. I don't have time for vacation. Mm -hmm. I don't have time to go to a seminar. Mm -hmm. I don't have time to give back. Hey, how, I, I can't teach. Hey, I, right. I'm passionate about teaching, but I can't teach because I can't make money, mm -hmm. let alone become the dean of clinics, uh, the greatest mm -hmm. chiropractic school in the world. Mm -hmm. And you use your talents in order to propel you to that to that prestigious uh, level of success. And I would love if you wouldn't mind sharing your journey and your story on why when people say I don't have enough time, how they haven't had the right systems in place and using their right. individual talents to propel them towards what they really want and how they can put chiropractic in the, at the at the level and the height that it deserves to be at. I think for me, it started back in chiropractic school. And when people would come speak on campus, I would think to myself, that person uh, sounds like a pretty cool mentor. And every one of them, every one of them said, would say, so I would contact them because they'd always give out their phone number, their email, whatever. Every one of them would say, well, why do you want to be a chiropractor? And, and my answer back then was, well, to help people which I think if you ask most chiropractors, that's probably the first thought, uh, if not actually words that comes out of their mouth. And every one of them said, that's not good enough. You got to search deeper. I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. Um, because I never really explored why. I mean, to be honest, the reason why I got into chiropractic was um, I decided I wanted to work for myself. And was driving down uh, was driving down the road, going home one day, and I saw a chiropractor's office, and I thought I could do that because what school six, maybe nine months, and so <laughs> so do it on yeah, the I didn't know didn't know too much about chiropractic school back then, but then um, so 
backing up a little bit prior to that moment, I had several jobs. Some of them were pretty cool. Worked for the Atlanta Braves, worked for a radio station, built sets for movies and uh, TV commercials. So did some cool things. But those cool things, even though the events themselves were cool, working there left me pretty empty. And so I, I, I didn't feel really fulfilled. I didn't have a whole lot of guidance just growing up. I'm, I'm a lot different than my dad. And so that creates issues uh, just because I didn't want his path. His path was great for him, but it wasn't what I wanted. He wasn't able to figure out what I wanted. So, so even going to undergrad, it was like, well, what do I want to do? I don't know. And what about the CIA? Okay. Cause I mean, I like James Bond movies. Right. So, so then I realized right away, I don't want to be in the CIA. As soon as I talked to the guy in the C, the, the recruiter, because I'm like, if this is working at this place, does this to you, I don't want anything about it. And so those other jobs were, again, they were cool. I've seen a world series game. I've seen stuff that I've created on TV and, and film. So that's kind of neat. Uh, had my voice on the radio uh, and some other things. What I started thinking about, and this goes back to my college time, because uh, I was in the theater department where I met my wife, and I liked, as, as much as I'm, I'm okay being on stage, I really like being in a position of um, setting people up to do cool things. And so that was always in the back of my mind. And then when I started to explore the why... And if I could give a shout out to Dr. Dean DePice and TLC, yes, um, he was the one that he sat me down and, and he asked me, like, what, what was the happiest you ever were? My wife was on the phone call with me. So I'm sitting next to my wife and he's like, when, 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 name like the happiest day. And you're like, you want to give like oh, the day I got married or the day my kids are born. But you're like, those are the easy ones. And, and was there one? And he said, it doesn't have to involve your wife and kids. And I said, thank God, because I'm sweating <laughs> on the inside because my wife's just looking at me, you know. And it took me 20 minutes to really think about it. And I, I, I thought about a time my wife and I were on vacation in Mexico. And long story short, we go snorkeling. Um, we were it was just the two of us. So we left the kids uh, home. I mean, with people. So they were they were looked after. But we, we were, I was swimming around and I realized my wife was done swimming. And so I swam over to her, snorkeled over and, and I said, are you done? And she goes, yeah. I said, and my thought was like, I didn't feel like I was done yet doing what I was doing. And so she said, no, I'll wait for you. I'm like, it's probably going to be like an hour. And he goes, yeah, no problem. And I said, that's crazy. Who wants to watch my fat acetabulum swim around the lagoon? And so I told her. Acetabulum? <laughs> Yeah, my fat acetabulum. So I said, or only acetabulum. A chiropractor. I got, only I, a chiropractor. <laughs> only. Yeah. Dude, Listen, I... <laughs> this talk is for chiropractors. So I'm going to use the lingo. I know the lingo. I know the lingo to be a chiropractor. At oh least that lingo. Gosh. I love so, you. So I said, so I sent her. I said, well, why don't you go back to the condo and go read your book? Because she loves to read. And she goes, you wouldn't mind if I did that. I said, no. And then what happened that week was, and I realized we really did exactly what we wanted to do in the moment. We, we weren't doing, we weren't serving our kids. We weren't serving our jobs. We weren't serving our parents. Uh, and, and even to a degree, we weren't serving each other. She was able to go read and sit on the beach. And for the rest of the week, what I did was I actually just put my headphones in and watch the water flow by. And then I would go snorkel when I wanted to go snorkel. Um, so we were together. But we, it, it was finding that we were really starting to serve our, our purpose. And so what I loved was we were able to do what we wanted to do. And so Dean says, well, that's your why. I said, what? He said, you love for the people that you love to do the things that they love to do. And so, so Dean can put things on the way that Dean can. And I said, boy, that's totally it. Because those other jobs that I did, I enjoyed being on the technical side of stagecraft. So I would build the set to see the actors go perform. Same thing happened in the movie and TV business. Same thing happened when I worked for the Braves. I was able to create an experience for people to come enjoy a baseball game. Um, in the radio, same sort of a thing was I set up, I was the promotions director, so I set up all the live remotes so that the on-air talent could do their thing. And so I really enjoyed that. And well, how do you, can you, is there something where you can do that? And so then when I decided to do my six to nine month education in chiropractic, I was, I had to go find a chiropractic school. So we had lived in um, Atlanta. So we knew about life and we thought, well, 
maybe and at this point we had moved back to South Carolina so I said well maybe we will maybe I can go to life I can come back on the weekend because my daughter was born we really liked raising our daughter in the upstate of South Carolina then I got on this there's this thing called the internet that was just starting and, yeah, and, this and internet thing right and back then you didn't google I was still asking Jeeves for those that remember that so I asked Jeeves about chiropractic schools. And the first thing came up was some school in Davenport, Iowa. And bear in mind, I knew zero of the history of chiropractic. So my first thought was like, who in the HE double hockey sticks would want to spend uh, what I was realizing was three years in, in Iowa. Uh, then I saw life was number two. And then the third one, I saw Spartanburg, South Carolina, which at the time was about an hour away from where I was living. And my wife is from Gaffney, South Carolina, and anybody that's been to South Carolina, or if you watched House of Cards, then you know the senator there was from Gaffney. That's from where the big peach is on Interstate Highway 85. So, um, and the big peach is about 20 minutes from Spartanburg. So I asked her if she had known about this school. Well, I know I had no idea. So we contacted them, and, and very long story short, we went up for their Sherman Showcase. Now we have weekends. Back then we had mornings. And so I showed up at Sherman with my wife and daughter. Uh, my daughter was probably about three at that point. So doing what three-year-olds do, she decided to pitch a hissy fit right as we're getting ready to go in. So my wife's like, well, you go and I'll just deal with her. I said, okay. So she goes. So I go inside and the first person that spoke was Dr. David Koch, who um, was the president at Sherman College. And so he opens his mouth and he talks about this thing called innate intelligence. And it just struck me about this, this concept of innate, because I, I think most everybody to some degree will agree with it and understands it. It's just, it's when we try to intellectualize. And so in your gut, you realize, yeah, that's how it works. But I'm like, wow, that just sounds awesome. And this is before I discovered my why all those things I had done before to set people up. Now I can do that. Because when I'm helping people express their innate intelligence at 100%, then I'm setting them up to have the biggest life possible. And that sounded pretty sexy to me, quite frankly. And so, so as soon as his talk was done, I'm like, all right, well, I'm in. And now I'm just going to deal with the rest of the day. Because I wanted to be sure I got the free lunch before I committed to anything. Of course, so, obviously. As, as you should. So yeah, there's practice tip number one, always take the free meal. And so, so then... Uh, yeah, then, then I decided, yeah, I'm going to do it. And, and I went outside all excited about innate intelligence, want to tell my wife about innate intelligence. And she gave me the death stare because she'd been dealing with this cranky kid. <laughs> so it left me to my own devices a little bit because, yeah, it was unfair for her to tell me how great my day was when she did not have a good day. So then I started. So I had to go back to school. Um, that was interesting. So at this point, I'd been out of school, oh, about six years. Um, I had never been to the chiropractor at that point. I knew that uh, Sherman College had a rule that you had to have a recommendation from a chiropractor. So I asked the school and nearby to me was Dr. George Auger. And those that don't know Dr. George, an amazing chiropractor. And so he was my first chiropractor. No and so I got to see how his system worked. So I was really blessed with who I was given as my first mentor. And so Dr. George was wonderful. Um, got to see how a cash practice uh, operated, got to see how the importance of his, because everything just flowed really well. And as we spoke, Dr. George has a background in electrical engineering. So he's a very process oriented guy. And so going into school, I was able to see the importance of processes. Maybe it wasn't in the front of my mind, but it was kind of settling into the back of my mind that I would use it someday. So then uh, I had to go back, I had to do nine uh, um, prerequisites that I had to finish because I was a political science major and really all that's good for is um, going to get your master's or doctorate and becoming an attorney or playing Jeopardy and Trivia Pursuit with your friends. So that's what a political science degree will get you. <laughs> what, it, what it did give me was the ability to critically think, which has which turned out to be pretty handy. Um, but I had, I, so I, I had what about two, two and a half years of prerequisites. So I was working during the day and then I would go to night school. And back then I did some virtual learning, which was plug in a VCR cassette of somebody talking, um, college algebra 
and watching algebra on the VCR. So it was a pretty solid virtual experience. So was it a oh, sleep it study that you're doing this for? You know, the you, you put you put on you put on something so people could go to sleep. Is that what this was? I th pretty much, pretty much. I should have <laughs> yeah, I should have just kept it. Yeah, it was unbelievable. So yeah, obviously online learning or virtual learning has become a huge long way in a short period of time. But wow. but that's what it was back then. And so I had to get through my prerequisites, um, and then I started chiropractic school. And so once I graduated, I didn't feel um, I didn't feel comfortable opening on my own. Uh, we didn't have a whole lot of money back then because the jobs that I did have, uh, we didn't have the opportunity to squirrel away a lot of money. Uh, I, uh, and that's just the way it was. And so, so, so I was unfulfilled financially as well as internally, emotionally about, uh, spiritually about what I wanted to do. So that's where we were. So we, we had like zero dollars. So, uh, my wife's uncle, uh, in the next town over from where we lived suggested his chiropractor, he told her that I was in school and she was a Sherman grad. So she said, Oh, well, when he's ready, I'll hire him. So I went and met her and, and, um, and you have your straights and mixers, and this is not to put anybody down, but she immediately told me that she was a big mixer. And this was the, so while she graduated from Sherman, her philosophy wasn't necessarily what Sherman's philosophy was. And my first thought was that might be a problem, but, and this is the thing with associateships is she said her goal was in six months, I'd open my own office. Um, cause she wanted to open a second location and I would work to buy that out through her. So you had profit sharing for the, for five years and it would swing, you know, it'd be heavily in her favor and then it would swing to me. And plus I'd be getting a bit of a salary at the same time. So, so on paper, that sounded good. Cause my thought was, well, I had no other option. And the truth is, if I'm honest with myself, I really didn't look for any other options. So practice mistake. Number one that I made was I decided to do the comfortable. And the yeah. comfortable was, let me take the first job that I didn't have to move. I didn't have to worry about moving my wife or my kid or any of that type of stuff. Let me just take the, the most comfortable thing that I can do because I had to make some money. And so that's what I did. So, so that was the first thing. And then and the second thing right there with it was I practiced with somebody that did not share my practice philosophy. Um, the, I, my thought was, well, I can work for her for six months and then I open my place and do whatever I want. Well, six months turned into two years and we still didn't have that second location. And that's just the way it goes. The good news. And then her son was in school and then her son's best friend was in school. And then her son, um, met a girlfriend in school and they were all coming back to the practice. Well, I could do the math. You had three chiropractic tables and you had, uh, five chiropractors and I wasn't really related in any way <laughs> to them. So I knew who was the odd person out. And so I think that was the way the universe said, uh, you know, now it's time to go. And I think about my time as the associateship. Um, we never sat that we never trained. I mean, honestly, I got my license on a Wednesday that Friday, she went on uh, an eight week or eight week, eight day vacation. Um, and it's like, just go get them. And now you're relying on your CAs at that point. And she had a pretty wow. good staff. Um, but we never had discussions on why we do it this way. It was just real, like kind of just do it this way. And here's how we go. Okay. And as a young, uh, and I was older in life, but I was a young, naive chiropractor and a, and a, and an entrepreneur. So I always had worked at places. Everybody else told me what to do. I went in, did my job. I walked away. I never thought about how to actually run that business and why the system's important. And I never, I just went in and just did systems that so when I worked for the Braves, I did what they told me to do. When I worked for the the, you know, building a set, you build this wall. Okay. I mean, that's all it is. I never really thought about systems. And so after two years, I was ready to open on my own. And I did. Um, started out really well. Things were going pretty good. And then uh the, the recession hit. So it took a little bit of a hit. Um, and what I was finding was, uh, I really still didn't have much of my systems and I was doing like a lot of people, I was trying to make everybody that came into my office happy and that's absolutely exhausting. Um, so I didn't understand any concepts like ideal client target market, any of those things. So I was just trying to make everybody happy. Uh, I intended to practice cash immediately went to insurance um, because that's what people asked. I mean, I only opened up a half a mile from where she was. I didn't have a non, I never signed a contract. So that was my, that was practice tip number one or number, what are we up to two for that one yeah, yeah, yeah. was I never had a contract as an associate. So I was still free and clear to go wherever I wanted. 
and why leave Pickens? Um, so some people did come my way. And of course, they're expecting things to be the way it was. And so, um, yeah. so I really didn't do the qualification process. So the qualification process should have been, hey, you're coming into my world now. This is how I'm going to do things. Is that what you want? But at the time, I'm like, I got to make money, got to make money, got to make money. So my red velvet rope was laying on the ground. And a red velvet rope is who you're going to let into your office. And so, because my thought was everybody, chiropractics for everybody with a spine. And so, so, so it was spits and starts. We were making enough money that we were surviving. So we were not thriving by any stretch. And so I started thinking, uh, well, maybe there is, and, and oh, this, yeah, now, now you're about five, six years into practice. So those people that might be kind of, I'm eight years in practice and I'm thinking about giving it up. I get it because I've been there. And I started, Eric Russell got the job as president at New Zealand Chiropractic College. And, Dr. Eric. and I said, you know what? Living in New Zealand would be fantastic. How the hell does somebody do that? Or H-E double hockey sticks. I don't know where this is going <laughs> for the kindergarten kids. That's so great. the, uh, the try once. So I, I emailed Eric because I had known him. I had met him through uh, IRAPS at Sherman, the International Research and Philosophy Symposium. And yep. And I said, how did you get into teaching? Because that, you know, and he said, well, he just, he went to community college. He cut his teeth there. And then when the opportunity presented itself, he took it. And going back, I never, ever, ever thought I would be a teacher. My wife always said I should actually, since I met her. Um, but I thought she was crazy because back then the idea of speaking in front of people scared the uh, excrement out of myself. And, and it was like, no way. And back then I had such social anxiety. Like when I was a kid, I wouldn't even knock on my friend's door. I would wait for them to see me literally sitting in the driveway. It was, I had such a hard time dealing with people. Um, but what I learned later was, was uh, this goes, and this is kind of an all over the place thing, but my wife, had, my wife, my mother had a really tough childbirth with me. It took her three trips to the hospital till I showed up. Uh, I was involved in car accidents as a kid. I played sports. And so I started thinking, you know what? I've been subluxated probably since the day I was born. And so because of that, it was choking off uh, my ability to deal with other people. And so I was a pretty emotionally unstable kid. And as I started, as I about a year into chiropractic uh, care, not even college at that point, but care with Dr. Auger, my wife and I were hiking one day and I said, I flip and feel great. And she said, do you think it's the chiropractic? I said, it's the only thing I'm doing different. And so at that moment, it really settled in that, wow, when you are able to let innate intelligence do things, then life can be better. Now, I was still um, feeling focused at that point. Um, so I did have some back pain, which I thought that was going to help. But back pain went away. The shoulder pain that I had went away that I've never had my shoulder adjusted by my chiropractor. It was just letting innate do its thing. So that sunk in for me. But now as I'm deciding what am I going to do? Um, I said, well, let me look. So I looked at community colleges as a, and at the point, I think I was working, I think my hours were Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. So I had time. And then I thought, well, let me teach some classes at night in anatomy and physiology lab. So I had a choice between the class or lab. I chose lab because that was a 15 minute lecture versus the class, which was three hours because they were block lectured back, uh, back then. And I'm like, I've never taught before. And so, so then I said, well, let me give it a go. And so here we go. So let's imagine you're the audience. What I'm looking at is the audience is the class right here to, to my left is, is the uh, computer. This is how I taught the class, just sitting, looking at the computer, reading the PowerPoint and not paying any attention to the class. So the second day I realized I am the suckiest teacher in the history of sucky teachers. I mean, this is so bad. And I remember thinking if, if these kids' parents knew what they were paying for, they'd be upset. And that was legit. I mean, I said, I'd be pissed if I was me. This is horrible. And I'm thinking maybe Powerful teachers- awareness Yeah, it was, it was awful. And then I started thinking, well, what did I like that teachers did? And I picked the things that I liked that they did because that jived with who I was as a person. So it's kind of like when you advertise through an archetype, you're, you're going through a lens of who you are in order to grab people, gravitate towards people. So I said, let me pick some of the things that I liked. And that next class, it was like 180 degrees. All of a sudden, the class seemed a hell of a lot happier. 
And then, then I was, I said, wow, that went really well. Why don't I do it again? And so it went really well. So without knowing it, I was developing my system of how I was going to uh, be in a classroom. I mean, some of it was humor. Some of it was just being, being fair. Um, some of it was learning. You, you, you have to say no at some point. Um, so it's kind of like being a parent. So it's, I realized I had to get over the, the, I wanted everybody to like me versus I wanted everybody to respect me and, and the endeavor that we were doing. And, and so then I just started having fun. I mean, if you're not having fun in what you're doing, uh, you, you got to either figure out another way to do it or go do something else. Hey guys, to continue the amazing podcast with Dr. Brian Dooley, click part two, serving a legacy.